Numerical Computation, Chapter 7, Video 6. We will now provide some analysis for errors and convergence of these iterative methods for solving systems of linear equations. So, when we consider the iteration in the general form, that is, um, xk plus 1 equals to some given vector y plus a coefficient matrix M times x to the k, and that's an iteration method for solving ax equals to b. And we assume now s is the solution such that as equals to b, as well as s is a fixed point for the iteration that s equals to y plus ms. And we define the arrow now is a vector to be the distance between your iteration xk and the exact solution. So now we try to understand how the arrow involves in each iteration. So the arrow at k plus 1 by definition will be xk plus 1 minus s, where xk plus 1 is computed by iteration, so it's y plus mxk, and where s is a fixed point, so it equals to y plus ms. And then we see y cancels the y, and we can take out the m as a common factor. Then we have m times xk minus s, and we recognize that that's the arrow at step k, so this is m times ek. So we see the arrow at step k multiplied by the coefficient matrix gives us the arrow at step k plus 1. So this is the equation for the arrow propagation. We now take norm on both sides. The norm of ek plus 1 will equal to the norm of this matrix and vector product. And by using the property that this is bounded by matrix norm times vector norm, now we have this inequality. So by a simple induction step, we may conclude that the arrow at iteration number k is bounded by the m norm to the power k times the initial arrow, where the initial arrow is x0 minus s. We now see that the norm of the coefficient matrix m becomes crucial. If this is strictly less than 1, then we'll be guaranteed convergence. So here's the theorem. If the norm of this m is less than 1 for some norm, then the iterations converge in that norm. So I want to um, catch your attention of the following fact that the convergence only depends on this coefficient matrix m, not depending on the vector y. Let's go back to our three methods, um, Jacobi, Gauss, Saito, and SLR. If we split our A matrix into this form, D plus L plus U, we derived in the previous video that they can all be written in the standard form with the different coefficient matrix. So for the Jacobi matrix, we have this expression, and we see that it's totally determined by A. And for gauss seidel we have this one, and we also see that it's determined by A. And SOR, the coefficient matrix takes this form where there is a parameter w here that allows us some flexibility. We could um, adjust it to get a smaller um, norm for this matrix M. Okay, so this is somewhat more flexible. Of course, if you know how to adjust the parameter w. We now go back to the same example that we have been used for all three methods where our A matrix is um, tridiagonal and diagonal dominant. Take this form, and uh, the splitting gives us the L matrix like this, the lower triangle, and D is the diagonal part, and U is the upper diagonal part. And one can easily compute those um, iteration matrix, the coefficient matrix M for Jacobi, M for gauss seidel and M for SLR following the formula we showed in the previous page. And these are the three matrices we get. Now, using these three matrices, 
we can compute their norms, various norms. Here we list in a table the three different norms, the L1, the L2, and the L-infinity norm for those three matrices. And then we see that um, Jacobi matrix has a bigger norm, and Gauss-Seidel, SOR, they become smaller while not in the L-infinity norm. So here we put both face, the L2 norm, is because that's the most significant one. It actually tells you the length of um, the vector in the Cartesian coordinate. So if you look at that norm and you see that, Jacobian iteration gives you about 0.7, Gauss-Seidel gives you 0.5, and SOR gives you 0 0.2. So we see that's much better, the SOR. Okay? So each iteration will reduce your error by a factor of 0 0.2. Now we understand better why the SOR method performs better, because now we have theoretical background to back up. Okay, we will conclude with the following um, convergence theorem without proof. The theorem says if A is diagonal dominant, if we remember the definition, that is, the diagonal term is much bigger than the sum of all the rest in absolute value. Okay? And then one can show that all three iteration methods converge for any initial choice x0. But how fast do they converge? That's another question. So, on the other hand, if A is not diagonal dominant, it might still converge, but it's not guaranteed by this theorem. And that's all we're going to say about an um, iterative method for a system of linear equations. And this is just a um, very um, short sneak peek, like scratch the surface of this big ocean. There are many other more advanced methods possibly covered in a graduate course. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.